This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, hello, everyone. As we march forward to a whole new year, it's coming. Um, and I want to welcome you back to another, another uh, 50 plus weeks of new bar- podcasts. They're for your author success with the Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing podcast and platform. And as you listen, you're going to get a variety of ahas, insights, tips, and definitely how-tos for your author publishing and book marketing success. I will be your, I am the host today as well as the solo guest because it's something I wanted to really kind of dig into and something that I had um, originally planned on, let's let's just go forward with marketing strategies. Well, we can do that. We're, I'm always doing marketing, but I really wanted to do a redefinition of a combination of what is this thing called an author platform as well as how should I publish? Do I go traditional? Do I go self? Do I go indie? Do I go hybrid? What in the heck do I do? And it really all started with a conversation with one of my clients who really felt that he should be traditionally published. And my response was, really? And why is that? And it basically, by the time we were done, it came down to that he felt that, one, there would more credibility if you were traditionally published, and two, that he really didn't have to do much of the work except for write the book. Um, and that both reasons are wrong. So I wanted to get into the whole thing of what is this thing called traditionally published and why should you really pay attention to how you get there and the decision making that's guiding whichever way and direction you go. So One of the things I'm going to just lead off, the magic word for all authors is compelling. Is your writing compelling? Is your storytelling compelling? Are the solutions to a problem that's been dealt with a gazillion times already compelling? Compelling. Two words that you want to avoid is mundane and boring, and that's unfortunately what a lot of happens When it's the same old, same old, it can be the kiss of death for you as an author, certainly for your book. So think about that as you incorporate the word compelling into your writing, into your storytelling, and yep, into your marketing. What you write to pitch it out, what you verbally say to pitch it out, even as you stand in front of people and you're being introduced, are you compelling? What's your presence? If you are not, eyes are turned off and ears are turned off and that you don't want that to be you. So let's get into, I'm going to use the word, I love uh, Stephen Colbert's truthiness. I like to use the word truthiness a lot. And that here's some of the truthiness when it comes to publishing. Today, over 1.6 million books are published every year. Those are books with an ISBN. Then there's a whole bunch that don't. There could be another million out there that people are just shoving out that, because it's so much easier to do it today than it even was five years ago. Over 1.6 million books are published every year. It means you've got competition. How will you and yours shine through and above that 
1.6 million. And if traditional publishing is really in your dreams, understand that less than 10,000 of those 1.6 million books come from traditional publishers. That's 10,000 out of 1.6 books. I'm just going to discard all the other vanity press related stuff. What makes you and your proposed work special to attract a traditional publisher if that's what your quest is. 10,000 out of 1.6 million is a long shot. Outside of being a celebrity, very few authors get real advance money. I mean, in the old day, I mean, I was fortunate when I started in this path in the early 80s that I was what I called a kept author. They took care of everything. I didn't have to think about anything and, and I didn't have to market. I didn't have to, I just went where they told me to go and books were always there. And it was kind of easy peasy after creating the book. That is not the way it is today. Outside of being a celebrity, Someone who's in print, on media, whether it's social or TV or radio or fill in the blank, they are a celebrity of some sort. Very few authors get any really advanced money. You're talking about if it comes, it's just a few thousand dollars. So my question is, do you have the financial resources to support you and your book project? If you're not going to get mega thousands of dollars, how are you going to make a living? What are you going to be doing? How are you going to pay the rent, the mortgage, the utilities, the medical bills, the drive around, the fill in the blank? How are you? Do you have a deep pocket? Or are you going to be just, you know, bootlegging it? Next up, I would look. The majority of authors published by traditional publishers sell less, and this is a gulp sell less than 5,000 copies of their books over the book's lifetime. With royalties only paid twice a year, and usually there's some kind of a holdback to allow for store returns, the non-celebrity author earns less than $4,000. So the question is, is your time and energy in creating your book worth more? And then next is most traditional publishers are primarily interested in the number of emails and social media followers you have. The question is, do you have mega thousands of them? And it's painful for me to hear when a, a publisher is considering a book they are already on the social media channels trying to find you. They're looking at your website. They're looking at are you on Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or Instagram, TikTok, fill in the blank. Where are you and how many followers you have? And why would they care? Ah, because it has everything to do with marketing. Today, few publishers really get out there and shout out for their authors. Very, very few. That's for the celebrities that they'll be doing the pushes for. So do you have that town hall, that email, the social media, that you're going to be able to pull it off and do it? It's so important to understand that. These are all serious statements, questions, that require a very thoughtful, serious response from you. Publishing, whether under the New York traditional model of, or the indie or self-publishing model, requires a lot of work, a lot of it. If the traditional path is in your quest, then you need to start doing some digging. And I've got nine points that I'm going to go through step by step as we move along in this. 
and put this all together as we uh, as we probe this. Is traditional publishing for you? Or is there another variable out there? Do you have the right stuff? Do you have all the elements that you're ready to put together? And that's time and that's energy and that's commitment as you look forward to it. So let's assume that you're in the newbie reign. Um, and one of the comments that I had was a dear friend of mine who has very, very successfully published only traditionally, selling well over a million copies, is now looking at, uh-oh, what's for me? Because I don't, this is her speaking, I don't have the huge social media following that is in their criteria. Oh, I get engagement and I have followers, but we're talking just a couple of thousand. They're looking for the big numbers and that's where people go into shell shock. So it, it really has to start with looking, okay, where am I? Are you a newbie, a newbie and uh, you're just starting along this path? Or have you been doing it for a while and already published by, by a, a publisher or many publishers and realize that all of a sudden the, the game's change, the rules are changing and, and you don't have the big following or maybe they'll come along and they'll publish you, but for, you know, for almost nothing. And then are you stuck and you stranded all that work? with little return? That's the questions you have to answer. So when we come back after this first break, I'm going to go start going through these nine essential elements that you need to be looking at and really answering fully and completely. This is Dr. Judith Bryles. You're listening to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing, and we'll be right back with you in just a couple of minutes. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you? Or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative, no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author You Extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, Members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author U is the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author U, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author U today at authoru.org. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book. If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All righty, so here we begin this process of where you are and how you uh, put it all together if if New York is your drive um, and starring that. And uh, my very first point I want to talk about is knowing 
um, that if you have no publishing track record, if you're a newbie to this, not only will you most likely be completing the entire book before you can submit it for um, seeing if anyone is interested, but you're also going to have to supply a full-blown book proposal. Now, in previous podcasts, I, I think that one of the books that if, if you're writing a book proposal is you get the fifth edition of uh, Jody Rines and Michael Larson's How to Write a Book Proposal. And that there's, you know, samples, there's elements, there's how-tos and the whys behind them. On there, Jody and Michael both, uh, Michael's retired now, Jody's still in the agency business, both have been working with New York uh, publishing companies for decades. So with that said, I'd recommend that to you, but you're going to have to write that. And sometimes, let me tell you, a book proposal can be harder to write than a book. These things have to be concise. They have to be tight. And let me say this, if you don't grab the reader in the first paragraph, the odds of them reading on are um, limited, let's just say. So you need to know how to write this book proposal and put it together. You've got to have a grabber. They are looking for that. How you write. Is it compelling? I'm going to go back to using the word compelling. Is it compelling? Do I see a unique twist? Um, do it, you know, what is it that they exactly are and, and looking for is important for you to understand. And this is for both, both nonfiction and fiction authors. Uh, in these areas. So uh, they're looking for it. A uh, proposal will argue why your, you and your book is marketable um, and, and why they should put their time and their money behind to support you. Uh, it's, a, it's a business case. It's a business proposal on why your book should exist, even though there's over 15,000 books already on leadership or why your book should exist because there's already a gazillion fantasy books out here. So what they are looking for is the answer to their why. So um, that, and, and, and it doesn't have to be for nonfiction, you know, you don't have to be a gazillion time already published author. It's the compelling, the uniqueness, does it address a common problem in the same way, um, there is a there is a it, memoirs is what we call a narrative nonfiction book, and that in a, a memoir, a lot of them are about how I overcame something, um, how I survived something, um, and it could be a health issue. It could be drugs are very big right now, um, but what makes it what what's your unique story? What's the compelling thing? Because you have already a lot of people in the pond with you. How are you going to swim above and ahead of them? That's what any publisher, any agent for representation is going to be looking for. They're looking for the unique twist in that. So even if you don't have a publishing track record, um, you know, that it, you can still get published by a traditional but it's how you go about doing it, how you present yourself um, in that process. So there, there are whole steps in the how to write a book proposal of what to go through, what to expect. They're going to look sometimes the entire book uh, goes with the proposal. Sometimes it could be a few chapters. And when I first started publishing, that's we just we just had to give them a sample question. The chapter didn't have to be in any particular order. We gave them a sample. We gave them the title. And, of course, we all knew the title was going to be changed anyway. Um, we gave them a outline um, and maybe just a paragraph of what would be contained in each area. A and then you identified competing books, what was unique about yours and difference, and that book was missing. It's always good when you, when you put out competing books that you identify what's missing. And here's, here's the secret sauce. If you go to Amazon and read reviews of those books, forget about the five and four, even the three, go to the two and ones and find out what people are saying that lacks. Okay. 
that will help you with a twist, bring it about um, and move you a little bit more ahead of the class in the competitive style. The, the One of the most important parts, and it used to be this was less, this is now more, is really about you and how you are going to market, what you are going to do, what are you going to do, put behind it. Um, in the old days, we used to say that we would be available <laughs> to support any media, the publisher, um, engaged, um, that we would be available to fly, we would be available to fill in the blank. Okay, that's that's irrelevant today. Um, and of course, you want we always would want to say that uh, for fiction authors, you want to be absolutely say that you will be available to book clubs, both virtually and in person in those areas. So those are things that you've got to start thinking about, noodling on, how can you expand on that? Because they really want to know, they must know what your commitment is to you and your book. How much time are you going to put into it? You don't have to say, I'm going to give four hours a day, but you want to say, you know, can they get a sense that you are going to be really marketing? Are you going to reaching out to your contacts? Are you going to be doing social media? Are you going to do special blogs about it? Are you going to be tapping into other bloggers that are like-minded or in your genre to see if they will pick you up? How are you going to go about getting reviews? Um, and are you going to be doing any special campaigns to support like a bestseller status? They want to know if you're speaking anywhere. What engagements do you already have set up? They want to know it all. And that's it's part of the essentials in your toolbox of how you will go about selling yourself. So do keep that in mind in that process. So don't worry about not having a track record. But now you've got to just supply more to it. Number two is um, you've got to really, and this would be either way, uh, fa even with fantasy, outrageousness and fiction books, you know, it has to be so much engaging that when the reader opens it up, they fall into it because they can fall into a um, the belief of the disbelief. And really be able to to be entertained for hours of reading pleasure. For the nonfiction, your concept has to be really tangible. It has to have a market desiring it, and that you can write. So this is where the elements of your writing style comes into play. This is why they want to see these samples, chapter chapter samples, and again. You know, we used to just throw in a couple of randomly. You can still do those kind of things. But I, if you if you look at some of the master storytellers, and I think that one of the best current living uh, bestseller uh, authors today, probably besides, besides J.K. Rowling and that kind of thing, it would be um, James Patterson. And, you know, he pumps out so many books he has a writing team that he works with to support, but he is intricately involved in that. He may do a yellow pad outline, but it could be followed up with 60, 70, 80 pages of ideas and details that he will turn over to whoever is going to be co-writing with him. Um, and then he stays with it in like, like checking, you know, teacher checks. Um, and adds to it and the elements to it. So is it tangible? Does your Is your story fun? Is it exciting? Is it suspenseful? Is it loaded with conflict? And one of the things in a recent interview that Patterson did is he will, he will just say that first page, that first page has got to be the ultimate, the books fall open and the reader has fallen in. It's got to be the beginning of a series of page-turning, page-turning, page-turning chapters. That's what drives him and where he's going. And as a fiction author, uh, you should be thinking the same way. How, how, how am I going to open this, baby, so it really comes off? As a nonfiction author, I have always stressed that stories are as essential for you 
as for the fiction writer. That's because when you're trying to deal with whether you're solving a problem and whether you're bringing insight that a uniqueness that someone hasn't really discovered by a, a specific topic or published about it with your unique, compelling statement twist to it, um, or are you doing something in a pioneering area? And, and I was really fortunate. I had two books that really started pioneering areas um, in going through, all evolved around my own work and research and, and took it from there. So you have to take that and you run with it and you have a variety of things that will support it. And, and it could be, for example, when I did my book on women undermining other women, it, you know, that, that when I spoke on it, it was contrary to popular belief. Men don't discriminate. Opening statement. Okay, so what do you do with that? How do you do with that? Everyone knows men discriminate, right? Well, so do women. And I took it from there. And some of the horrible things that have happened to women who had expected support from their uh, sisterhood that turned out to be not only thrown under the bus, but run over it several times. So bring it about that. Don't be afraid to be outrageous, to be outrageous. But storytelling is important for both genres always. So this is where you need to practice your writing skills. And, and really look at this is where you study what other writers have said. I, I always recommend Stephen King's book on writing. Oh, yes, I know. Everyone thinks of him as about, you know, he just writes horror. He writes a lot of awesome stuff. A lot of awesome stuff that is not in the horror as you think of the horror of King who would be connected with that kind of thing. So the bottom line is that you must prove that your concept is tangible, there is a market salivating for it, and that you have the skills and the toolbox to bring it off and write it that they want to keep turning the page. That's what they're looking for. All right. We'll be right back. It's Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. I'm Judith Bryles. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one -on -one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the Events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so one and two in this, as we started off, was knowing that if you don't have a publishing track record, 
um, you're most likely going to have to complete the whole book as well as a proposal. Two is you got to prove that your concept is tangible and that there is a market out there that wants it. And then the number three, and I've already said this, but I'm going to say it again, your writing must be compelling. There's that word again and outstanding. It's the elephant in the room. If you don't grab, whether it's an agent, an editor, or the reader in the first paragraph, the odds of further reading are dramatically reduced. Although my experience is a reader will give you a few pages, but you know, most books are shut down before the second par uh, chapter is com uh, completed because boredom has hit. It's not interesting. They don't find anything unique about it. Um, it's either the same old, same old, or there's no interest in it. So that's why you've got to go out to grab them and compete, co complete it and keep it going. When I work with other writers, it's always, you know, what little nugget can you drop in that's a tease that will leave us on? Um, if you, I, I think it's always a good idea for an author, especially a fiction author, all, although, boy, a lot of movies are based on nonfiction books, um, to get a copy of, there are, there are free screenplays available online. Just Google, go to the Google and put in, you know, how to get free screenplays. And uh, this is script writing. And there are plenty that are available that you can just download, study them. You'll notice that they're rarely over 120 pages, that there are certain segments by page 15, this happens, this is page 30, this has got, something's got to happen by page 60, halfway through, there has got to be a massive conflict. Um, and there'll be certain things going on. Study them. That words actually are, it's not lengthy because there's a lot of space between these things because they're really set up for the director to do the interpretation and then the dialogues in there for the actors to portray. But you will learn a lot if you study all successful movies, just Google free, free uh, 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 script, movie script for and what's your favorite movie and see if it's available out there. Um, it's, it'll be a fun exercise and going through and see how these things are put together and they have to move. Movies have to move. Um, otherwise, you know, who's going to want to attend them in there. So address the elephant in the room. You got to grab, you got to grab them. Number four is, and these are so important. I've already kissed on this just a little bit, but you can't be a social media resistor. And I, I come across authors every day in the workshops um, and in clients that come in to, to me to have them help them put their book together and, and get it published and all those things. And we always have the marketing um, discussion and they don't want to. They just want to write. Well, get over it. Marketing is part of everything that you're going to do going forward right now, starting now, if you haven't already. So you can't be a social media resistor. I've always said it's the town hall. There are a lot of things about social media I personally do not like, but I use it. I have to, I, but I don't spend a lot of time on it. All right. So you've got to start building. If you're if your goal is to sell your book to a major publisher, this is the first thing that they're going to find out. How many followers do you have? Where have you been? What have you done? What social media bases platforms are you on right now? You know, do you only have 15 followers? That's going to be red flag number one. So you need to get over that and figure out, okay, so what's going to work for me? So let me give you a couple of suggestions that um, if you are not even sure where you belong, because um, you're saying, no, I don't belong on social media, and I'm say, yeah, you do. So if you're feeling that you don't belong or you don't know where to belong, 
look at some of some authors that you follow, um, that you read, and figure out what social media channels they're using. So if you start going and, and Google their websites, often the icons for wherever they are posting on, or they have someone post for them, but wherever they're posting on are going to be right there. So look at them. Start following them. See what's going on so you can start getting your toe in the water for this. So that's one way to do it. Now, you also have to start building. So whatever you decide is the right ones. And, and by the way, you can't do them all. You, you may have an author that you just really admire and they're on like six of them. Don't go there because you're dealing now with the overwhelm factor. Pick two. Pick two. And what seems to be most current and just, you know, start developing them. Now you're going to have to create a profile, um, a description of you uh, that will bring in maybe be a magnet that will bring in others who are looking for fantasy writers who love unicorns or something, you know, something like that. But um Keywords is what I'm talking about. What's the keywords that will bring people into you? I always prefer if you could use your name. Now, I have, for example, on Twitter, I have got three different accounts. One is for the Author You community. One is for the Book Shepherd community. And then one is for personal, um, where I just use my name. But that's really I'm following people that I want to follow so I can see things very quickly that's trending, happening in book publishing and book marketing per se. Um, the, 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 my primary post is, for example, would be my book shepherd on Twitter, where I post several things. I put quotes up. I put quirky, funny holidays up. I put uh, book industry news up there uh, for my followers. Um, and, you know, a little bit of everything. And I do it every day. Now, secret sauce. I don't do it every day. I do it once a week. And it's just all posted at one time, and then I don't have to think about it. I can take a day off. I don't have to worry about that. Or I could be on a vacation. No one knows I'm gone unless I tell them. So think about that. Don't be a social media resistor. Discover which platform of like-minded books in your genre are using. Get your name and what they call your handle, um, and start building like like today, start. And it's, it's a town hall. This is where a lot of action happens. If you're ever going to be doing a bestseller campaign, it's going to be doing a, an Amazon bestseller type of campaign. It'll be done through the social media channels and, and possibly your email list. And that's it. So don't be a resistor. Get going. Next thing, if you've got, and, and this has always been interesting for me to see, is some of the email addresses people choose for themselves. Um, and if you were like me, we, in fact, my first email address, John, John was my husband, is my husband, and he was, um, we all started on AOL. That was a big hot thing back then. And that he just went ahead and got my name. He, he had Dr. J. Bryles. And, and I said, but, but I really didn't want to use that, the J.J. Bryles. And he, and he actually added some numbers in it on it. He put my birthday. I said, no, don't do that. So I want you to dump any cute email address or you save it for close personal friends. And if they see something coming in from that, ah, okay, that's Georgie. So dump commute emails. Your goal should be to look and sound professional. So get your name and, and where you go. I mean, I would prefer to have your email come off of um, your, your own website that you, when you have a domain, it has a website and it could be Susan at blah, blah.com or, or Sam at blah, blah.com, whatever it is. And now I, I have a variety of different ones. So we use the bookshepherd.com, of course. But and I, it's always, you know, it's always been actually Judith at Bryles.com. And, and Bryles was my main email website 
uh, for uh, 40 years. I, I had Browse.com when the dot coms first started coming out, and we've always done redirects. Everything, everything now goes through the Book Shepherd, but everything I have of old redirects through that, so I nothing. I don't lose any of those old emails. Get an email that sounds like you, and it could be, you know, SusanJohnsonAuthor.com, since Johnson's a very common name. Or you could go to, uh, you know, it, you may want to pick up Gmail or you go through some of these other places. But find something that if someone's trying to search for you, they don't have to figure out numbers and oddball symbols and things. You want your name, your uh, maybe your author, you know, author or books. It could be Susan Johnson books. Uh, fill in the blank. All right. So that's important. Next up is since we're talking about resistors. In social media so don't be a computer resistor it is always stunning to me the individuals I come across who are um, ignorant would be the right word who, who are just really ignorant how to a, a computer uh, to, 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 to make a folder to put files in a folder to start organizing things and this is really important. If you're moving into the book business, the authoring business, you really need to get a tad organized here. So you've, you're going to be computing, uh, communicating with many, many people who are going to be communicating with you via email with files that come from computers or you're sending things. You've got to have a starting point where all this is going to happen and you know what to expect. Um, from it and you need to know besides turning it on but you know have a book folder within the book folder you'll have a lot of other folders one will call marketing one might be called publicity one might be called old files one might be called completed chapters I, I don't know what it's going to be called but you want to be able to access these things very quickly and send it to an agent or to a publisher or to someone who's interested in interviewing you, you name it, it's out there. So don't be a resistor here. Computers are part of our lives. You need them. And please, please don't do everything on your phone. I mean, I do know mobile's very important and we have that, but you need to be able to have a storage place for these big files and get to them very quickly. We'll be right back with our final section here and how to get your book published. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and e-zine at thebookshepherd.com. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author, 
You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book. A book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book. If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so as we march through these nine steps um, that we've gone through, and I'll just recap the first six, was you even if you don't have a publishing record, um, that means that at this point you're going to have to most likely do the have the whole book written as well as a book proposal. Second is you've got to, you've got to be able to prove very quickly that your concept is tangible. Um, and there is a market out there that wants it. The third was your writing needs to be compelling and outstanding. It's the elephant in the room because you've got to grab whoever is assessing whether or not they want to pick you up quickly, like in the first paragraph. Uh, that you, if, if you've got social media resistance in your DNA, get over it, remove it. Um, and realize that this is the way the game is played now um, and that people are going to be looking back for, you know, what is your platform? And basically, when they're looking at you, what you have in your number and your number count, it is what is your ability to sell books because of who you are and who you can reach out to. This is the influence factor. All right. And then I just I suggested get rid of your or don't use for your authoring side of what you do a quirky or a cute email address or one with a bunch of, you know, widgets in it or uh, symbols, numbers. Make it easy for people, memorable. If they meet you, they like you, they can find you, they can reach out to you. Um, so dump cute related email addresses, and don't be a resistor for using a computer. There'll be so many who are trying to contact you to get information from you. They need maybe a file from you, um, a resource, etc. cetera. Um, and you are still struggling to wear stuff on the computer. You got to get organized. All right, next up, here's another resistor thing that comes into play. You got to build a website. I have actually got into an argument with one author saying, I don't even understand why you need a website. It is your online business card. It is where things are stored. It's where people talk about you. They can talk about you. Are you taking their whatever their reviews are, um, quotes, testimonials about a presentation you've done, zap it onto your website. It's where you can let people know what your purpose is, what your goal is in writing. It can, you can be sharing certain things. You can do so much with your website and it's where people look. So when when an agent or a, a, a publisher is looking you up besides social media, they're seeing what your website looks like. So you don't have to have it complicated. You, you can have it simple, but it better have something about you. Better have something about what you're, you know, what you're writing about. Better have something on how to contact you or any other nuggets uh, that you can share. Um, and, and again, that I, I think it's very important that you don't have the standard uh, when it had, you know, connect with Martha type thing or connect with George um, or just says, co you know, contact usually up on the tab. And you go in and basically it says, ask for your name, your email, your phone number, and then there's a box in what your message is. Um, that is a butt pusher for me. Uh, I I want to know what your phone number is because if I like what I'm seeing here, I want to call you right now. I want to see what your email is. Have it there. Don't bury this stuff, please. 
on it. So get a, a, a website built. There are a lot of, of sites that you can use if you're someone who is <laughs> understands some of the technology. Um, and you could play around and try to do it yourself. There is DIYs out there. Or you can do some searching and asking for individuals out there to help do the building for you. But this is where you should get some help, some advice. Um, and this is where your branding, this is the visual branding that is going into play with what you have. Next up is that if you, you know, on a, uh, knowing that if your manuscript is picked up, um, this is kind of where you have to let go a little, that the title could change that you loved. Uh, the, that you, you were hoping to have a partner and you may not have a partner here. In fact, they may not want to have a lot of input from you. And once it moves into a in, in publisher's hands, um, a lot can be significantly changed. That uh, the the content can be substantially reduced, um, and timing. And and this is always a question I ask. And I'll go over these these couple of components here. Is that how important is this for this book to get out right now, or you know can it just hang out for a while? Wait, wait for eighteen months, two years, which is what's going to be with a traditional publisher. So that you need to really understand that once you release it, I always loved what John Grisham said one time in an interview that I was uh, watching. And he said, you know, they pay me so much money for my books that I really don't care what they do with them once they they do it. They could change the title. They change things. They, they do whatever. But I've turned it over to them. If you can't do that, you need to think, okay, how do I keep control of it? And it's probably not going with a traditional publisher in that case. I always look at these components, you know, how important is control to you? Um, how a book looks to me is really important from I want input on the cover or I want at least cover approval. I really want input. I know about personally, I know how to write marketing copy. I want input on that back marketing copy, which is really one of the most important real estate factors of your book. The cover is to pick you up. The back cover sells the book and you don't have to tell the plot of the book, but you tease and you bring it into play. So, how important is that control? How important is the quality of the book from the, how the paper feels to how the visual layout is? How important is that? How important is the money you make? Now, the money is another animal that people don't realize how little. I'm going to go back to what I said in the very beginning of the show, that the typical author today, unless you are a celebrity, only makes a few thousand dollars. Less than $5,000. Typical author. So if you want to make more money, there are other ways to do that. You can publish, but you need to learn how to sell it yourself. And, and I would recommend to all of you to get a copy of my book, How to Create a Million Dollar Speech, based on your speech and your book and that kind of thing. So... If, if your book, and then last thing, if your book is a memoir and your story has to be unique. So I guess the point is you got to be unique. Whatever you're doing, please, please be unique. If your book is a memoir and your story is about surviving cancer, let me tell you, that's almost as common as getting a cold. There are so many books on surviving fill in the blank. The same thing with addiction, any of the gazillions of addictions. But what's your unique twist? Now, there's millions in the same boat, so there's a market. But what's your unique twist with this baby? And, and what's the unique storytelling with it? Um, and ditto with when you start looking at the other books out there and you do need to know what other books, a lot of authors say, oh, no, no, I, I can't, you know, I'm writing this. I can't look at anything else out there about it because I don't want anyone to think I copied it. I mean, story's a story. Addiction, 
is addiction, depending what the, what the addiction factor is, but there's there's a commonality. There's a commonality often with survival. But what's your uniqueness to it? What's the story that will inspire, that will give hope? Um, and then, of course, how are you going to market this baby? So mega thousands of all these things exist. Um, I, I love to think about Carol Fenster. Carol Fenster was one of the inductees into the Authors Hall of Fame this past year. Carol wrote um, her, her first book was a cookbook. There are a gazillion cookbooks out there. Do we need another cookbook? Not necessarily so. Carol is a pioneer in gluten-free cookbooks. She was rejected by all the publishers that she knew, rejected, because, you know, they didn't think there was much of a market. So she decided to self-publish wheat-free recipes and menus. Well, it started selling like crazy. And all of a sudden, one of the rejectors stepped back into the plate and bought it. Sometimes thinking smaller instead of bigger is better. So final thoughts as we wrap up here. If your vision is New York and traditional publishing, I've got to ask you why. If you think that they will do all the work and you can be kept, you better think again. Yep, a publisher will absorb the cost of production for sure. It will make the book available to distributors for sure. And you will get anywhere from maybe 7 to 15% max if you're selling a whole bunch of net sales. That means after they sell it out. That means, you know, it's going to be 45% and less of whatever that retail is. Now, all of a sudden, a $20 book that is selling at 45% off means $9. If you are getting 10% of the net, that means you're making 90 cents every book. The great majority of any marketing will come from you, the author, always, unless you're the celebrity, along with your time and money spent to get there. So just do the math. Just do the math. When I first started publishing in 81, I was a snob. I thought only legitimate authors published in New York only. That is nonsense today. With 1.6 million books published annually and only 10,000 coming from New York, your odds are not in your favor. Is your ego guiding you? So my truthiness is know who you are writing for, why you're writing, understand your intentionality, and create a compelling story, problem solver, or insight. We'll see you next week. This is Judith Bryles. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryle.